guys, welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to make the king of all Greek desserts, baklava. It's the Greek version, it's delicious and simple and easy and I can't believe I haven't taught it to you yet. Now it just has a few ingredients in it. Greek desserts are most of the time very, very basic when it comes to ingredients. There are not too many in them. Let's go over so that way we can get started. So first you want to start off by making the honey syrup. Basically I, all I did was I combined some sugar, water, honey, I use Greek honey always, and then a little bit of lemon juice, brought it to a boil, kept stirring, and as soon as everything was melted, I just took it off the heat, and I'm going to set it aside so it can cool completely. In this large bowl here, I have some ground almonds and ground toasted walnuts. I put the, I toasted my walnuts in the oven at 350 for about five to seven minutes. Then I put both in the processor until they were just coarsely ground. Then I have some cinnamon here, ground cinnamon, lots of ground cinnamon, and some ground clove powder. That's the filling. You're gonna need a pound of thawed out phyllo pastry. Number four is best for this. And then, last but not least, is lots and lots of unsalted melted butter. So I use up all my honey, so I don't have my honey bottle to show you here, but I like to use Greek honey. There is nothing like it. If you're making this dessert and you can find it nearby or online, be sure to use it. It's caramel-like in texture and then the flavor. I haven't had anything, anything like it. It has hints of thyme in the background just because thyme grows wild in Greece. If you, can't, if you can't find it, I'll post a link online where you can get it on Amazon. And then one more tip about measuring honey. Measuring honey is kind of tricky because it'll stick to your measuring cup. So what I like to do is grease the cup with a little bit of oil. I just take a clean cup, pour some olive oil in there, swirl it around, put it back into the bottle. And then when you measure honey in here, it just slides right out and nothing sticks to the measuring cup. That's just a quick tip. Now be sure to make your honey syrup first because when you're making syrup yasta, or syrupy desserts like we're making today, you want the syrup to be cooled down when, so that way when the pastry comes out the oven and the pastry is nice and hot, the cold syrup will keep everything nice and flaky and perfect the way you want it. Now, when you get a spoon, all you want to do is mix your nuts and your aromatics, your cinnamon and your ground cloves together. So simple. Now you can definitely get fancy and add some orange zest to this or some lemon zest to it. I mean, you don't have to, but you can if you want to. But this right here packs a great big punch of flavor. This is all you need. Set that aside. Now, you need a 9 by 13 inch baking dish. Make sure that your phyllo pastry is thawed out overnight in the refrigerator because as you know, phyllo pastry is usually sold frozen in the supermarket. You cannot work with frozen dough, so it has to thaw out slowly in the refrigerator, then take it out a couple hours before you're gonna use it and leave it in its packaging at room temperature, and then it's gonna be super easy to work with. What you're gonna to wanna to do is cut the phyllo sheets, the phyllo pastry, to fit the size pan that you're using. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I opened it up, I'm using number four pastry, phyllo pastry. Now what that means is that they're gonna be super thin and you're gonna have a lot of layers of it. Try not to use the country phyllo, which is gonna be like a number, a number seven or a number 10 or a thicker cut one because um, that won't really work for this recipe. Now you just take your pan and you cut the phyllo down the center. So that way they're gonna fit in without any hanging over the sides, if that makes any sense. You're gonna have two piles. Just put one on top of the other. That should be good. Take your baking dish. This is the easiest way to make baklava that you'll ever see because we're not gonna butter each layer of phyllo like most people do. We're just gonna grease the bottom of the pan just so that way the phyllo, the, the first layer of phyllo can stick to it. Now I'm going to do something else. I'm going to take the larger sheets, because these are going to be kind of the fillers, and I'm going to count four for the bottom, like that. No buttering in between, none of that. We made thousands of baklava at the cafe, and I'll tell you that this recipe has never failed. So I'm going to take four to five sheets for the top. I'm going to set them aside right there, and I'm gonna cover them so that way they don't dry out. I'm just gonna cover them with a clean 
kitchen towel. I'll do two. You could do the top one slightly damp, but I'm going to move quickly so I don't even have to do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our nut mixture and we're going to sprinkle it over our, fill, all over our phyllo sheets and then do that every two layers. So in two layers, sprinkle a little bit, about a tablespoon or two, and keep going until all the phyllo runs out. Two to three layers, if they stick together, nothing to worry about. I'm just gonna keep doing this. I'm not buttering in between because you're gonna see why at the end. Now we're going to take the last four to five layers that we reserved, put them on top. Then with a sharp knife, I'm going to cut three slits all the way down. Now you can go across and cut little slits to get little rectangles or, and then you can do triangles afterwards, but I'm going to do that little diamond pattern that everyone likes by cutting diagonals. That looks good to me. Don't worry about them being perfect, all equal size. This is fine. And now, are you ready for this? You have never seen this before, I am sure. This is a bakery trick that, that we learned doing over there, trying to make things as quick as possible when you have to make a bunch of baklavas every day. We found that you can just take all of this melted butter and just pour it all over the top and it's gonna seep through and get into every single layer. And you can skip the buttering in between layers that's very traditional when you have, when, or that you've seen the way people make the baklava. And then you're gonna to wanna to take a little bit of water and just drip it all the way around the edges so that way the phyllo stays down and doesn't curl up while baking. Just a little bit, use your fingers to do it. That might have looked crazy to you, but trust me, it worked every time. We've made thousands at the bakery. They come up buttery and crisp and just delicious every time. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna put this in the center rack and let it bake until it's beautifully golden and crisp all around the top, all over the top, I should say. And that takes anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour, but keep an eye on it. I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. One more thing that some people like to do, some people like to put a clove you know, on each portion of baklava and you can totally do that right now before you, ba uh, before you bake it. That's just another little added embellishment. I'm not used to doing it, so I'm gonna bake it just like this and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. As soon as the baklava comes out of the oven, it's, first of all, it should look really nice and golden brown like that. You're gonna take the cool syrup, can you hear that? You're gonna pour it all over the top. Then you're going to take cinnamon and drench the top generously. Ground cinnamon all over the top. And then you're going to leave it alone for a couple of hours or until all of the syrup is absorbed. So my baklava baked for about 55 minutes and, and when it's beautifully golden on top, just take it out, pour the syrup over and then you have to do the hard part. The hardest part of all this which is to wait until the syrup gets absorbed. Now I didn't wait, I should have waited, but it's fine, I'll wait for the second piece. <laughs> That'll be the deal that I made with myself. But for now I had to take a slice out, out to show you guys what it looks like. Look at all those beautiful layers, the crispy buttery phyllo, the nuts, oh my god the syrup. I made myself a Greek cup of, a hot Greek cup of coffee a hot cup of Greek coffee to enjoy with this and I'm gonna go into this right now and take a bite. Mm. So easy to put together. 
so delicious. This is the only way to describe it. The layers are so buttery and we didn't have to do the whole tedious step of buttering each layer of phyllo, which is what every single baklava recipe tells you to do. Owning a bakery for 10 years really taught me some very handy dandy quick little tricks and tips that I love to share with you guys on this channel. But back to the baklava, the nuts are just perfectly seasoned with the right amount of um, cloves and cinnamon. They're so the filling is so aromatic, so nice, has all the flavors of the holiday season. The honey syrup just, of course, takes it to the next level. You can keep this in your refrigerator many days. It stays fresh for at least a week, so I mean, if you make it and you have any leftovers, just store it in there and nibble on it every day with a nice cup of coffee. I hope you guys make it, share pictures with me on social media. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I hope you guys head on over to the website, DemetriusDishes.com, or you can get the description right underneath each video. It's right underneath this video in the description box down below. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Share pictures with me on Facebook and on Instagram. I love to see your recreations. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. Yes, I'll see you guys next time.